Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Our focus today is on your financial future. For most people, one of the biggest pieces of retirement planning is their home. And one of the retirement tools available to homeowners is called a reverse mortgage. Joining me is Scott Funk. Scott is one of Vermont's leading advocates for aging in place, and he is a reverse mortgage consultant. Welcome. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Good morning, Judy. Now, I want to point out before we get started that uh, Scott will is with us to share his professional expertise. His appearance here does not mean that we endorse or promote a particular product or service. So, Scott, why are we talking about shopping for reverse mortgage? Well, more and more people are looking at reverse mortgages as an option. And if anyone who watches television knows about every third commercial is about reverse mortgages, they're also very predominant on the Internet. And often when people are calling those numbers or typing in their email, they don't realize that they're going to be called very aggressively and pursued to make a decision. And it worries me because this is not a, a product that people should choose quickly. They should take their time, talk with their family, and that pressure that they can get from those calls can really create stress for the, the homeowner. Let's talk about what a reverse mortgage is. Okay. A reverse mortgage is a way for people over 62 to borrow on the equity in their home. So if you get a regular mortgage, you have to make a monthly payment. Mm -hmm. With a reverse mortgage, that payment is optional. You don't have to make it, but that doesn't make the bank nicer than other banks. We still want to get paid. So we loan you the money you borrow, and we loan you the interest on the money you borrow, and it gets bigger until you die or leave the home. And it comes with, in Vermont, they, they're called home equity conversion mortgages. They come with federal insurance, and that insurance protects you and your heirs from owing more than the value of the house, so you can't be underwater. And it also, if you have a credit line, it protects that credit line so it can't be denied you, even if the bank goes out of business. So it's very different than a traditional equity line that the terms can change during the time. Mm -hmm. And so what's your biggest concern with this? Well, uh, with the shopping? Mm -hmm. or, or the yeah. with, with the shopping, my biggest concern is, is people being hurried in their decision. Uh, one of the things I run into is I'll talk to people who have called a number on TV or they're dealing with someone over the Internet, and they'll be uncomfortable, and then the, the person that they're dealing with will start acting like they're offending them by not taking the calls. And the, and the pressure is just not appropriate when you're talking about planning for the rest of your life, plan, you, you're talking about your home. These people, I mean, obviously are trying to sell you something, too, so you have to be careful about that. Absolutely. They're, they're salesmen and, and it's important to understand that. And in fact, I encourage people to know how are they getting paid? What's their role? Uh, and and being more, the more aggressive we are at asking questions as consumers, the better shoppers we are, the safer we are when we shop. And if you can't get those answers, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. That's a stop sign. Mm -hmm. That's what's going wrong here. So talk a little bit more about misleading websites because obviously People access the web, look for information, um, and there are all kinds of things out there. There's a lot out there, and what people don't realize is some of those websites are there simply to get your information. So, so you type in looking for Social Security information, and your name, your email, your details get sold to marketing companies, and then someone's calling you out of the blue trying to sell you a product, a financial product, that you didn't even ask for. So I encourage people to be very careful and hesitant about giving out their email address, giving out their personal information. I was going to ask you what kind of red flags are there if you're asked what particular questions. Well, number one is what are you what are you wanting to get, and is it worth what they're asking for? Your your email is a very valuable commodity. Doesn't seem like it to us, mm -hmm. but to the people that are going to be be emailing us, it is. And so I wouldn't be giving out my email just to get an estimate, just to get. I went to a website the other day, and I wanted to go to the next page on the website, and it asked for my email address how much money I make, what's my home worth, all of these details came out that it wanted to know, and I just wanted to go to the next page. Right. So I just booted out of that site. Mm -hmm. And so what's that information used for? I mean, you, you talk about stalking by salespeople. 
<laughs> yes. Well, what happens is it's sold. Uh, the, the company I work for buys internet leads, and I and I and some of them I have to call. And I called one person, and she goes, why are you calling me? I, I'm signing up for Social Security. I never asked for this information. So it's pa your, your information is packaged and sold. Baby boomers especially are hard to reach in marketing. And so when you type in your age, your address, your, your, the value of your house, how much you make, uh, what your email address is, what your phone number is, that can be sold over and over and over again to many different companies. It's out there. It's out there and it's, it's gonna be out there for a long time. Um, so your biggest, um message I guess to folks is if this makes you nervous or if it's a you know you get a bad feeling about a call that you get or a call that you make or you know a website back off back off and if it's someone calling you about a financial product and you didn't initiate the call that's always a bad sign mm -hmm. I would hang up on that immediately well, let's talk about your website and what's different about that okay well we created it uh, so that people would have a place that they could get information about reverse mortgages without having to put in their their email address so it's designed so you can go there get your answers to your questions and if you never want to call me don't call me you can get all the information you want because the information you should be able to learn about a reverse mortgage without telling me your email address because the information is the same right. no, no matter what so how can you answer everyone's questions? Well, it's a challenge. What I, <laughs> what I did is I, I made a list of the 100 questions that I've heard most often, and I answered those. And then we have another one in there. If you come up with an answer that I didn't have, then it tells you, you, you basically, you won, you stumped me. Mm -hmm. And if you want to shoot me an email, I'll answer that question, but I promise not to take that email any further unless you want to. What are some of the questions that are the most common questions you get? Why do reverse mortgages have such a bad reputation? <laughs> uh, that's probably number one. Um, what, what's the difference between that and a regular equity line? Um, what happens to my kids when I die with the reverse mortgage? Mm -hmm. Often people will ask me what happens to me when I die, and I always say that's really not my, <laughs> <laughs> you know, talk to your priest or rabbi. Yeah, that, you'll need another address for yeah, that. <laughs> that's beyond me. But it's mostly um, basic things. And, and what's interesting is when I meet with people, that's what they want to talk about. But what's important isn't the reverse mortgage. What's important is what's going on in your life. What are your values? What are you trying to accomplish? And, and I think people don't spend enough time on those questions, and that's why I try to make it easy for them to get the other answers. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we're talking about people, um, baby boomers, as you were saying, who could be retired for 25 or 30 years. Yeah. And so they're going to need something to live on. And, and in a world that's a changing world. That, that uh, you know, when our parents retired, they had, had defined benefit pensions, so they got a guaranteed income. The, the world really didn't change very radically. Well, in the last 10 years, you know, if you, if you have a mobile phone, you're old fashioned because it's <laughs> now a smartphone. Right. You know, so things are changing so fast. And, and people increasingly, especially boomers, want to have more options. And so they look at their home and they look at the wealth that's trapped in their home and they want to have it in play as part of their plan. Let's go into some specifics. What is the most important difference between a traditional and reversed equity line? Well, uh, w when you're getting a traditional equity line, it's free. Mm -hmm. The bank pretty much just gives it to you. So it's very enticing to get into it. Yeah. But it has a, what's called a reset date. So if you have your loan, you have maybe 10 years. You don't have to pay anything but interest, but you have to pay the interest. Mm -hmm. And then after 10 years, then it resets and you have to start paying back principal. And suddenly the payment can go up by 30%. And at that point, they freeze your equity line, so you can't get any more money. With a reverse mortgage credit line, that equity line never changes. It never, it, your, your access to it is always there. You can make interest payments, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. And so once people understand that, um, does it make it easier for them to make that decision to say, mm, okay, if, if I'm looking for a longevity, this is the way to go? No. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's the hardest part of my job, is I'll talk to someone and uh, I had someone the other day that I talked to him five years ago. They went with the equity line because they needed a new furnace. And now they've called me back and they want to switch to a reverse mortgage, but they had to get a car. Other things happen. And sometimes people, as, as the payments go up, they end up going back to the equity line to make the payments. 
So they're borrowing their payments out of cash, and suddenly they owe all this money, and now they don't qualify. For and a so reverse I, mortgage. For a reverse mortgage, and now I can't help them. So what's the number one thing that people should consider if they're even thinking about a reverse mortgage? What's the number one thing they should do? Think long term. Think long term. If you're a couple, think about what's going to happen to the surviving spouse. Do I have long-term care insurance? I read something the other day. If you have $300,000 saved when you retire, 250 of that will probably go to medical issues. Wow. Which is just staggering, mm -hmm. especially for me because I don't have 300000 <laughs> saved. Uh, and, and so the, the longer term you think, and, and what, are, what am I trying to say? Because retirement is a journey we take for the rest of our lives. It's a journey we don't know how long it will be, but we're not going to come back alive from it. So it's a very long journey. And the more we think about that end game, the better we're going to make retirement decisions. I don't like to think about the end game, though. <laughs> no one does. No one does. I had one uh, lovely couple I met with, and uh, we were talking about because they didn't have long-term care insurance, and the wife was very concerned, and this was going to be a solution to that. And the husband said, I'll never need it because before I get that sick, I'll kill myself. <laughs> and she leaned forward, and she goes, he talks big right now, but can I count on him? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, the number one step, obviously, is to think long term. Yeah. Then, then what should you do? Well, get involve your family, involve your trusted uh, advisors. Yeah. If you talk to your lawyer, talk to your CPA, uh, talk to your financial advisor. But don't just talk to them and say, should I do this or not do this? Say, these are my concerns. What are the options that we could look at? And, and I think one of the mistakes people make is they see this as an either or. I'll do this is a good idea or it's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. It's not a good idea or a bad idea. It's what are the choices I have available? What am I trying to com accomplish? And let's take our time and decide what accomplishes what we're trying to get done. Which sort of brings us right back to the beginning of the program, which is if you get a phone call out of the blue from someone saying a reverse mortgage is for you, that's the ro totally wrong thing to do. This is something that you should really think about and talk to people about. Absolutely. I very rarely just sit to people. I'll sit down with them. They'll say, well, do you recommend a reverse mortgage? And I say, no, because I don't know you yet. Yeah. You know, and, and the longer we take and the better we understand our choices, I think the better decision we make. It's not something to be just a quick yes or no decision. No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And so if people want more information um, about reverse mortgages, what can they do? Well, then go to my website. It's scottfunk.org, so mm -hmm. it's easy to remember. Uh, they can call me at 238-4216, and I'd be glad to answer anybody's questions. Mm -hmm. And once again, too, you really encourage people to talk to their family members about this so that everyone's on board and, and knows what's happening and what's going to happen. Yes, for two reasons. One, it helps you make a better decision. But also, if you're talking with your adult children, it helps them understand what really is going on in retirement mm -hmm. so that they can plan better themselves. And when should you think about planning for retirement, do you think? Well, I think most financial advisors say when you're 20, but <laughs> <laughs> nobody does that. Um, I, I, anybody in their 60s, I, 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 would like, I like to talk to people a couple of years before they retire or as soon as they retire. Mm -hmm. So definitely before they think this is an option, they should still be looking into it. And uh, once again, some of the, the top questions that people have about reverse mortgages. Well, they want to know why it has a bad reputation. They, they want to know... Uh, how the money how the money is made? Mm -hmm. uh, how, how does the bank make money? Uh, is is it too good to be true? You know, uh, often people will see the TV ads and they'll go, "Well, you're just going to give me money, right?" And I, I say, no, <laughs> you know, and how how the money is made, and 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 ask themselves, "What am I trying to accomplish?" Which has nothing to do with reverse mortgages, mm -hmm. and that's probably the most important question. Why do reverse mortgages have such a bad reputation? Well, I think number one, because of the way they're advertised on TV, and a lot of the people that are in the industry are just pushing it as a sales product. Uh, unfortunately, in this country. We don't regulate people specifically if they're working with retirement issues, and, and we should because mm -hmm. it's a different standard of ethics. Uh, for example, one of the things I learned is that I don't call people back without permission. So every time I talk to someone, I ask if they want me to call them back or not. And if you just keep getting calls, you're going to come away with a bad feeling about that product, whether you did it or not. Mm -hmm. So the big, the big number one issue is to educate yourself, and uh, that information can be found on your website. Yep, and take your time.
Spirit. Thanks so much for being with us. It's been a pleasure, Judy. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.